Hallelujah. Uh, amen, amen. I am, uh, um, I think one of my issues for the little last little while is I've started to neglect some of my most basic things, and that's um, my morning Bible time, okay? And I, I see like a slow oozing over into compromise where sometimes when I'm like really tired and I've only got like an hour or two of sleep and I have to go and do like a mega horrible day after having a mega horrible day and a bunch of other issues and I just wake up instead of reading my Bible I would just push the re I would just push play on my on my um, Bible and so I can hear it and uh, yeah that's better than nothing but that's not um, it's not like the, that's not the new standard for um, morning time okay listening to the Bible is not reading the Bible okay um, if you can do it some in some settings where you're actually getting something out of it that's wonderful but it, it's really different than reading the Bible in my opinion um, I believe that we need to be disciplined to study ourselves and um, there's a time to listen and there's a time to read and in the mornings I believe that my standard is to read okay and I don't know what yours is but I know that if I don't read continuously things are going to be not working out the same and um, I want to defend the Bible again okay now I know I've been shuffling around with this for a little while and um, I remembered some of my original thoughts about the issue about um, the Bible and um, the thoughts from another guy is, is getting a little it seems like it's getting a little old but it's it's such a big deal that I really want to shuffle through it and make sure I have I know what I'm talking about when I'm getting through this thing because it's not as simple as that it's not just as simple as no big deal just boom wipe it off to me it doesn't feel like that it feels like it's a very big deal so that's why I'm taking it very seriously um, there's some thoughts I've heard from some big preachers on TVN this is TV preachers, it's, you know, I'd rather just say it like that because there's TV, whatever. A lot of the most famous preachers, sometimes you'll hear them say things that um, allude to um, very dangerous talk. Okay, um, One of the things I've heard, which I think is really bad, and it even come from C.S. Lewis, who I don't, I don't recommend at all to anybody, any of his movies or any of his whatever, I don't recommend him at all. Uh, maybe he said good things, but whatever. But there's people who have said good things in a way they talk about nice things, and they even talk about, you know, serious talks and stuff like that. But overall, they start to get into heresy when they start getting big, because there's probably places in the big, big camps that cause you to compromise and start to say things that is just not fair and not, it's not true. It's very her heretical and very blasphemous things that is very dangerous to get into. And I've heard it come from several mouths of big leaders, including C.S. Lewis, saying that we are little Christs. Okay, that's a Catholic, that's a Catholic catechism belief. Catholic catechism has a lot of heretical things to say, and I highly recommend you don't get into that as well. Um, it's just that a lot of people don't, they don't realize the Catholic connection between a lot of the Protestant um, views today in the mainstream, because the mainstream and Protestantism has been so influenced by a lot of pagan Rome. Okay? Um, when you start saying that we are little gods, and when you start to say we are sons of God like Jesus was the Son of God, that is also heresy. All these kinds of little things, we are little Elohims. Okay, we are little gods, we are little Christs, stuff like that. That is absolutely blasphemous talk, okay? It's wrong. We're not little Christs. Christ is the hope of glory that lives within us. That's what the Bible does say. The Bible does not say we are Christs, okay? The Bible does say that we are ye are gods under one under one point I do remember that and um, when it when we're talking about that kind of stuff we got to make sure we're saying it definitely in context or don't even bother even saying it because um, unless you just want to quote the scripture and say hey that's a scripture it's saying something there um, I most certainly know I have never created anything so to call myself like God at all is is psych, is psycho. Okay, it is spiritual suicide to start talking about these things and believing them. Okay, 
that's why a lot of Christians who, who watch these TV preachers suffer a lot and have to adhere to a lot of flesh to keep themselves afloat. Truth. Radical truth, okay? Um, something I heard this new guy talking about, it's new to me, and I've been chewing on the things that he's been chewing, chewing on what he's been doing for a while, and I keep making videos about it. Um, I know it gets a little old, but that's kind of where I'm at right now, you know, and I've seen a lot of people come along, they're busy bodies doing a lot of good stuff, and all of a sudden they just get cut off and they don't have anything to say anymore, and that kind of, it kind of scares me, it, it kind of sets me back a little bit, like, whoa, what's going on, dude, what, are, are you alright, like, what are you, why, why aren't you making any more videos, <laughs> you know, and I'm not, I'm not making any videos because I'm not, like, confident as I was because I'm trying to sort something out to see if it's a chance for growth, or is it a chance for something just to, just to remove it and keep on doing what I'm doing, you know? But for me, in my house, I'm choosing to serve the Lord and grow in the Lord. And um, if there's something that this guy has to say that I need to know, and uh, something that he says rings true to me, that I'm going to continue um, going there, you know? And I want to learn what he has to say. I want to learn to take the good stuff, and um, if I can't take everything, then that's fine. But uh, some of the things he says is not good. He says the Bible is good. Okay, that's fine. If you say the Bible is good and that's why you leave it, good. But if there's a but in there, then uh, I'd like to start to get a little hazy and warned about what you're going to start to say after that. The Word of God is good. The Bible is the Word of God, okay? We have to understand that there is a very, very, very big difference between the Word of God, the Bible, what God said, this is it, final, this is all. Don't add or subtract to this Bible. Don't, don't do it, okay? Now, um, this person says, uh, yes, we have all had encounters with God, and when you say things or write things, it's just like the Bible. That is, that is heresy. Okay, it says, don't add or subtract to this book, okay? Don't add or subtract to the, this book, okay? Um, think about this. There is prophecies in the Bible that talk about Jesus being born. Now, of course, we can't have... Uh, prophecies about Jesus being born unless we had prophecies that go in, in, in back in history as opposed to like regular prophecies that go ahead of time. These are things that are going to happen, okay? Well, these are true prophecies. Like Isaiah, the holiest prophet that ever lived, says that um, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was chastised. These things about Jesus Christ before, he had ever, before Jesus ever walked on the face of the planet. And a lot of the times I believe these people are prophesying the best they know how and laying things down that they might not even fully understand. Okay, I don't know. Maybe they did. I don't know. It's not my business what they did or not. But they prophesied right. Under the power of the Holy Spirit, they say things exactly as they're saying it. Like Just like the Bible says Moses heard clearly and spoke clearly the preciseness of what God had to say. That makes him the vital voice. Okay? And those with clear re revelation, they're the ones with the vital voices at, at any time. But it does not mean it's the same as the Bible. <clears throat> the Word of God was a final product that God had allowed to be made over uh, a couple thousand years. Actually, probably <laughs> 4,000 years. Maybe 2,000 years. I can't remember how long. Yeah, the Bible's been around for 2,000 years, and there was no history written for the first 2,000 years of the 6,000 years. So we're just a little over 6,000 years right now of all history that we've known according to the Word of God. So obviously some of the, some of the, um, the prophecies written in the book was, was, was post-dated, you know? If, if uh, Moses was the one who wrote the entire book of Genesis... And he was writing about Adam who came before him. He would have had to have had historical prophecies. He would have had to um, see the creation of the world and write about how Adam lived. You know, Adam didn't write his own, his own scrolls. History did not start getting written down until 2,000 years or at least or more uh, after the creation of the world ever happened at all. Written by Moses. Pretty radical thought. So the history, 
has been written for about 2,000 years before it was set in stone, and that was the book. That was the Bible. That was God's final deal there. So it was it, the history of the Bible covers 4,000 years, but it was only written over a period of about 2,000 years. Okay? So anyway, um, the Bible is the Bible. The Bible is the Word of God. And then when we are speaking rhema, nowness, present tense, God showed me this, I know it was God, good. I know it was God too. But it's not the Bible. It's, it's still God. It's still like what these other people did. But guess what? There's a gigantic difference between the Bible, the Word of God, the infallible, this is what God has done and laid down for a permanent fixture of this is what I'm trying to say to the world. Listen carefully. That's what I'm trying to say. Hear it, hear it, and believe it, and obey it. Those who obey the gospel won't be jacked at the last day. Okay. Now here's my point, okay? These things that people are saying and trying to make, make us look like little gods and little Elohims, gods is creators, okay? There's got to be some kind of other other kind of thing, like a, like God, like the God of this world. Obviously, he's not a creator. The devil's not a creator, right? So maybe there's another word for God, but I just don't like to put that thing into our world and make it start to seem new age, because it can be turned into that very, very easily, especially with people who don't have discernment, and so many people today don't. And they're very easily swayed, okay? I'm not a kind of person that's easily swayed, and I'm sitting there chewing on some things that people think I'm crazy for chewing on. And I'm like, man, there's something here that we need to know, and I'm going to find out my final thought, and if it's going to take me a year to figure it out, good. You might have said you had it all down before, but for some reason, I'm not going to just spit it out and chew it out that fast. I want to I want to be able to know exactly what I'm talking about and take it in and make sure I'm not going to get myself into, into trouble in the, in the midst of it and while I'm doing it. Yes, I know what I'm doing, and sometimes I have to stop and think once in a while. Because there is room for growth. There is room for being quiet. There is time for being still. And I don't want anybody to think I'm just... That I'm, that I'm falling off the plate. I'm not falling off the plate. I'm, I'm taking a break so I can chew on something for a while. And if it's just something that's in my way, I just need to get rid of it, it'll be gone eventually. Today or tomorrow, or the, or the next, I don't know when. But my whole issue here is the Bible is the Bible, and we are just people following the teachings of the Bible so we can know God, just like they did in the Bible. Real Christians know the voice of God. Real Christians know are led by the Spirit of God. They're, they're true to the Word of God. They're, they're obedient to the Gospel. And we also have to understand that our doctrine doesn't come from our own experience. Okay? The testimonies of people um, who follow the Word of God, they, they have a testimony with the Lord Jesus Christ. That is not doctrine. Okay? The Word of God describes all kinds of different miraculous things, all kinds of different ways God has communicated to us, all kinds of different manifestations of the Holy Spirit, all the different giftings, whether it be supernatural or just supernatural and natural looking. Like the difference between the gift of mercy or the gift of helps versus the gift of tongues and interpretation. Okay, One's very spiritual and prophetic -y, and one is very everyday. Okay? I don't care what kind of spiritual gift it is. The, the, spiritual, the Spirit shows itself in so many different ways. And there's just so many different aspects and factors to, to bring things in, to make sure that we're not sitting there saying, my experience was the only thing that proves truth. God has so many ways of lead, leading people to Himself. He has so many, people, so many different ways of leading people to Himself. Okay? We don't, all of our stories are not going to match except for one thing. It declares the glory of God. Whether it sounds radical, like I went off drugs and to, um, coming to the, and going into jail and then getting saved and having all this, you know, crazy stories to tell, or just I was in church all my life and I didn't know I was lost until I finally came into a place and realized there was a difference between a real Christian and what I've been all my life. Either way, it declares the glory of God. There's all kinds of different stories, and they don't always happen in five minutes, you know. But there's always that little moment where something really happened, and everybody says, whoa. You know, and it really does declare the glory. It really does give God the glory. And they all don't look the same. The stories are different, but there's always that place where there's a real definite change happening. You know you're a different person now. 
with uh, not no chance of going back, but you're just you're just so set on like now I know I'm different. I'm just different now. Maybe I I might struggle or something like that, but I I know I'm a different person. You know, and that's really holy a thing. It's a holy glorifying thing to God. The testimonies are different. Okay, watch out for the teachings of people who allude to. We are just like Jesus, okay? In one sense, we are like Jesus because we are flesh, like he was flesh and blood on the earth, bodily form on earth, and was resurrected in bodily form, amen? And he, he, and he sought the Lord and, and he rejected his godly, his creator authority in order to act like a human being on earth and be submitted to the Father, okay? And we can be submitted to God just the same on earth in that sense. Doesn't mean we are creator at all. Ye are gods, no, ye not that, or something says that ye are gods in the Bible? Good. We didn't create anything, so obviously it's a very different situation. We are not the tra- we are not part of the, the the Godhead. We did not create anything. We are not Elohim. God, Elohim means I'm self-sufficient God. I'm self-existing God. And so it's very very scary to call us little Elohims. No, we're not little anything. We're flesh and blood. We're a worm and no man. We're nothing. We're dust to ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And apart from Christ, we can do nothing. We are not self-existing. We are self-relying on the only thing that matters, Jesus Christ, God Almighty. We have to rest in Him. We have to abide in Christ. We're not little Christs. We're not little Elohims. We're not little gods. We're nothing. Apart from Him, we are dust, arrogant little dust, trying to do our own will, walking in the blindness that this devil has caused over here with rebellion and sin and apostasy and blasphemy and heresy. That is what people are. Totally, perfectly, hopelessly lost. But God and His grace and His mercy and His blood can truly make a real thing happen where you are truly a different person. And we are not like that at all. Our words are just words that God gave us and they're not the word of God solidly laid down into the most greatest book that's ever been created on the earth. It is not just a good book. It is the word of Almighty God. It is the finality of what he had written over 2,000 years. 40 authors, 66 books. It is the word of God and don't let anybody tell you differently. Just knowing that's not going to save you, but don't let anybody tell you that differently anyway. Let that one be established in stone in your heart. Don't let anybody change your mind that the book is just another book. It's not just another book. It's the Word of God. And and all the revelations that you've gotten does not add yourself to the book. You're not going to add to the book. And you're not going to use that to subtract other parts of the book that you don't like or don't understand. Just because you don't understand or don't have light on the parts of the book, that doesn't mean it's not legitimate. It doesn't mean it's not legitimate. Everything in that book is of the is of God, of the Creator, awesome Yahweh, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, God. The Godhead created that book and used mortals, used fallible men to do it. But these people wrote things down and they took it far serious, more serious. How do I see there's a difference between the apostles of the Old Testament and the New Testament? These are these great men. These apostles, these uh, these prophets and patriarchs, these people who heard and were God breathed and wrote down exactly what God said. How do I know there's a difference? I'll tell you because my shadow doesn't heal cities. That's why I have not been sawed asunder yet. There is no comparison to the things that have happened to those apostles of old and the and the prophets of new. Uh, there's nothing that you can compare. There's something very, very, very different about them. And if you cannot see that, my friend, you are the deceived one, not me. You are not God, and what you say is not equal to the Bible. Yes, it's the same God that spoke, but there's a very, very big difference. God made it over 2,000 years, and it better be highly respected. Highly sought after, and highly meditated on. Yes, we want to have a relationship with God, but it better match the Word of God. I don't care if it always matches every revelation of some people who profess faith in Jesus Christ. That is not the standard. The standard is coming into fellowship with Jesus Christ and bless the Lord on my soul. It will match the Word of God. From Genesis to Revelation, and don't take a single verse or word or yacht or tittle out.
The church loves Jesus. The church loves His Word. And the church loves to know that they are apart from Him. Nothing. Amen.